I hope you had a uh, enjoyable discussion and your virtual or real coffee in between. So we are now moving on to our third keynote. Um, um, and I welcome uh, Michal, Michal Ganyobak, Yak. hopefully I pronounce this right. I would like to briefly introduce him. Um, he earned his master's degree at the Slovak University and then continued with a PhD um, at the uh, Slovak University of Technology uh, Faculty of Architecture in Bratislava. And already there, he um, was working with new aerogel-based aerogel materials, so new materials that seem to be uh, a topic that goes on. Uh, and uh, he was a Fulbright postdoc at MIT Cambridge, um, um, working on the effectiveness of aerogels um, um, in, the, in protection of cultural heritage. And um, um, then he moved to EMPA with, uh, with his Marie Curie uh, postdoc fellowship on there, focusing again on aerogels, uh, in renovation of existing buildings. And uh, his scientist position started 2021, so this year, with support by the Velox Foundation. And he is uh, uh, conducting research. And we will hear today about Let's build translucent walls. Michal, we look forward to your presentation. So thank you very much for introduction and um, also for opportunity to speak here at the daily academic conference. I would like to also express my gratitude to Welch Stift which supported this, uh, this project. So let's build translucent walls. Uh, Imagine the house, uh, which will be, which will have walls, which will be not only load bearing, uh, thermally insulating, but also, but also uh, light transmitting uh, walls, which will be uh, make your, which will make your house comfortable, uh, energy efficient, and uh, also healthy. So this I would like to propose maybe with the presentation. Yeah, at it, as it was introduced, I am uh, not chemical engineer. I'm coming from EMPA, but uh, yeah, I'm architect. And uh, we developed this project on previous research, uh, uh, previous uh, research program, and we are continuing now at the EMPA more further. The idea is pro uh, to collect these are desirable properties of glass, silica aerogel, mentioned translucency into brick-like element, aerogel, uh, glass brick. Uh, Roman architect Vitruvius uh, formulated uh, his uh, requirements for buildings and building materials. They should have strength, function, and beauty. Uh, these, I would add, maybe there are uh, dimensions of life expectancy and uh, ancient definition of sustainability, uh, which we would like to, to, to project into our, our pr pr uh, research, where we would like to develop brick, which is load bearing, uh, durable, which is light transmitting and thermally insulating and also uh, aesthetic in the material and uh, uh, appearance. So, so far we are in the uh, stage where we are developing and optimizing the, the, the brick. Later we will uh, create a mock-up which we will measure and gather some data. And this data we will make uh, understandable and, and accessible to architects, civil engineers uh, and other decision makers. Probably you know the feeling where, uh, um, where, where it is very uh, cloudy and you are tired and unproductive and uh, maybe even with a headache or you go for a walk uh, at sunny day and you have wonderful sleep after. So life on Earth adapted uh, or, uh, to rotation of our planet and we, we know for thousands of years that we have internal clock which drives uh, our uh, these, uh, these uh, uh, rhythm. Uh, it was uh, this, uh, described on molecular level in 1984 and uh, re received the Nobel Prize in 2017, which drives this circadian rhythm uh, and um, from Latin circa approximately in dies day. So for those who are not familiar, weather condition, artificial uh, sources of light, uh, even the light in the interior colors and materials are affecting the incoming light into our eye. We have non-visual receptors there uh, with melatopsin, which uh, are responsive to blue part of the spectrum and uh, 
they uh, reset our uh, internal clock, uh, they uh, drive uh, release of melatonin sleeping hormone and uh, affect our uh, uh, sleep-wake cycle of focus and alertness. Uh, this controls mechanism of timing in every cell, switching on of genes during light, uh, day, day and night, and uh, production of proteins. That's why the light is very important for us. Meanwhile, we live more and more in the cities because many areas are becoming cities by urbanization. Uh, uh, also, many people are moving to the cities. Uh, currently, more than half of the population of the world lives in the cities, and it's increasing in high-income countries. Uh, profound change happens also because of technological transformation. We have a new artificial sources of life, and the uh, workforce is digitalized. Many work, uh, uh, work jobs require only computer and uh, access to internet and inter interior. And it is known that in Western countries, more than 90% of our time we spend indoors, and these are pre-COVID uh, data. And currently with uh, COVID lockdowns, uh, suggested home office and uh, winter season, uh, this time is even increasing. So, and perhaps negatively affects our uh, health. We are basically indoor species and we are not very well adapted to it. And uh, even our buildings are not. So, it may have an uh, impact on our health in uh, disruption in short term and long term. It's also not whole equation that there is a, it increases the time spent indoors, decreases the light, uh, but also increases uh, pollution, indoor pollution, lack of fresh air, decreases movement and increases our unhealthy eating, eating habits. So here Arjo comes to, to, to the scene to help. Maybe for those who don't know, aerogels are nanostructured open celled material with high porosity. This porosity can be 99%. It, uh, the, 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 the voids yeah, can be uh, 99% and uh, uh, material just one. And uh, uh, pores are in the size of nanometers and this makes it very good thermal insulator. It's two to four times better than currently used styrofoam and minerals. Um, most known, it's a silica aerogel, which I will be speaking about, and uh, it was prepared in 1931 by Stephen Kistler. In the building, it started maybe with introduction um, of aerogel blanket and aerogel granules in uh, 2003. They are used as a filler, uh, as an ingredient material. 2012, it was uh, developed, uh, developed render for buildings uh, with the help of EMPA and uh, currently new applications are appearing. So it has a very interesting combinations, very good thermal insulating for facades, for pipes, fire protection and acoustic insulation, potential acoustic insulation because research is happening. Translucency is uh, uh, which interests us, uh, the granules can be transparent and translucent and paradoxical combination of properties uh, uh, it's a uh, vapor openness and uh, super hydrophobic property, uh, which uh, makes it compatible with cultural heritage structure because it doesn't create a vapor barrier. So, uh, translucent properties can be uh, used uh, for various reasons because of utilization of natural daylight, of course, transmission of visible light and uh, sunlight diffusion, which brings uh, protection against glare, elimination of strong shadows and dark areas, bringing the light more into interior and uh, uh, protection of the privacy. It also can be used for, for projection and uh, the light diffusion of with artificial light. There are many translucent systems. Uh, some of them are load bearing, uh, some of them with aerogel and also thermally insulating, but there was not a solution connecting all of these properties at the same time uh, into modular versatile element. And we try to, uh, to, to fix this. We started with a typical glass uh, Luxfer block, uh, which, are, which were popular about 140 years already. Uh, we filled it with uh, silica aerogel granules, uh, this is how it looked before and after. Block loses uh, transparency. 
but it's still possible to transfer the daylight. Uh, thermal simulation showed that uh, we improved uh, the properties uh, like twice. And even if the detail was sol solved, uh, it was even better. Uh, this is our first version of the glass brick made out of float glass, uh, where we wanted to see uh, visual appearance and how it will how it will behave. So this brick uh, we aim to use as a substitution for perimeter wall for harvesting of the daylight. So you can have a window for a wheel, but uh, the, the brick, this brick for for perimeter wall is not aimed as to be as a substitution for windows. Several designs were prepared with different composition of glass and uh, internal spacers and aerogel, uh, which were evaluated thermally. We chose uh, optimal design from thermal point of view, also from point of manufacturability with uh, four internal spacers, uh, yeah, four corner spacers. You can see exploded view from the top. There is the aerogel granules. It contains four. Uh, corner spacer for stiffness, uh, three internal for the hindering the thermal transfer. There's a, there are glass panes and internal ceiling. So this is the structure with the uh, spacers and uh, glass without aerogel and uh, without ceiling. Uh, glass brick, you can see the translucent, the transparent uh, spacers uh, with the diffusive light effect. We, uh, we prepare several blocks in the, in the workshop uh, uh, for measurement. Uh, they were used for measurement of thermal conductivity and uh, compression strength, uh, some of them. And uh, uh, this is what are the results. Uh, compressive strength is about 45 megapascals, which makes it seven, four, seven times higher than uh, conventionally used clay blocks uh, from which are Houses many times built, uh, depending uh, yeah, depending which uh, initial value we take, it's four seven times higher. Uh, for uh, from insulation point of view, to achieve 0 0.22 watts per meter square Kelvin, it uh, would be necessary to uh, use almost two meter of this uh, classical uh, glass block. If we take a very good one, uh, 70 centimeters. And with a uh, with a brick, it would be te uh, theoretically possible 23 with 23 centimeters to achieve this very good value. According to properties of uh, aerogel, the, the, the visual light transmittance is around 40 percent. Probably you are very familiar with these uh, figures. Uh, this is energy uh, consumption by sector uh, ar uh, around. 35, uh, this last year, 35% is consumed by buildings, residential and commercial buildings on the graph, the big blue. Uh, inter, uh, according to International uh, Energetic Agency, 60%, around 60% 60 is uh, uh, of this energy uh, consumption is dependent on design and construction of building envelope. And where we, uh, this is where we see uh, potential for such a brick uh, in end use to save uh, operational energy for space heating, space cooling and lighting. So with the thickness of 13.5 centimeter, it's still able to transmit uh, around 40% of the light. Uh, the cladding is uh, typical cladding. And for those who are interested more in the details and measurements, uh, we are submitting paper in energy and building soon. Maybe we will be published there. I cannot uh, promise that it will be there. But... And we hope this aerogel brick can make a faster, cheaper construction and maintenance, uh, saving operational costs in heating, cooling, and lighting of the building, uh, improve health of the inhabitants by enabling more natural daylight in buildings and the real broaden palette of architectural materials. Thank you for your attention.